Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for December 25th through the 31st, 2023. So this is the very last week of 2023, and i just like to um, thank everyone who is watching this um, last video of the year and for all of your support. I hope that your holiday season has been um, really blessed and that, um, that you've really been enjoying the time with your loved ones thus far. And if you're new to our Angelic Wisdom community, welcome as well. So just a few um, reminders. First of all, if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you have. Uh, select the all notification bell, like, dislike, and leave your comments. If you'd like to get an angel reading with me, you can go to my current website, theangelschool.com slash services. And this link and all the other links I will mention are you can find in the description area below this video. If you'd like to support my channel with the do donation for this year, um, you can go to, to my PayPal me link, um, which you'll be able to find as well in the description area. I <clears throat> will possibly, not quite sure how I'm going to do the um, sort of a, if I do a yearly reading or just something uh, very general on the year of 2024. Not quite sure how that's going to happen um, yet, but I'm sure it will occur to me um, the best way to, to do it. So um, along with that, um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do the angel scopes um, for this holiday, because it's the holiday season, but I definitely would try to uh, maybe do an annual in some way shape or form i'm not quite sh clear about that yet so um and i will start the daily card messages sometime in january i haven't made up all of my plans um for if i'm going out of town or not so <laughs> that's why i'm just sort of putting it out there like that um with not quite a lot of certainty or clarity around it I um, <clears throat> had a, I caught the flu, um, surprisingly, because it didn't even feel like I had the flu, but I had, a, my estimation, really, truly an, an allergic reaction to the dust when I was uh, transferring everything into my new bookcase, and which is now glass, and encased doors, so to cut down on that kind of thing. But I, I, um, I got it for my decks and all of my spiritual tools that I've been using for the channel and I had a lot. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> um, at some point when I probably do like a live, you might, you'll see it. Um, this enormous Ikea a bookshelf, <laughs> bookshelves rather, because there's six of them. So, <clears throat> yeah, let's um, take a deep breath now. And just center your mind and your heart. And the angels are were showing me a um, a lamp. And um, <clears throat> now they were just showing me sort of a a um, a book, and an open book. It might be like a journal. And um, and there was sort of this leaf. It almost looked looked like a palm leaf to me, but um, kind of heart shaped. It kind of looks like the 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 card, the spade. I think not the clubs, but the spade. Like kind of kind of that shape. And um, and so this might be a really good time to um, spend some time in reflection. Um, especially if you haven't had a, ch a chance to do that. Um, one, for 
for gratitude for the year. There has been so much that has been very difficult about 2023. And so um, it's good to be able to have this time of the year to integrate um, your, and to reflect so that um, you can see with gratitude the blessings, the, the lessons, the challenges that have moved you forward. I think that's what they really want you to um see out of all of some of the drama of this year and um they really want you to to see that you know love has been moving you forward and nurturing you but sometimes they have to present certain lessons and challenges in order for us to awaken and to and that is to say open our hearts up so um I don't know why they were showing me this, but they were showing me a, sort of a female with a bra, like a lace bra. And then that's my symbol for nurturing. And the bra represents sort of um, um, support. So really supporting yourself with a lot of nurturing at this time. And then um, out of the bra just came two hearts. So they really want you to be very compassionate with yourself as you reflect. Um, they're not judging you at all. You, nothing you did was inappropriate or wrong necessarily in the way that you, you just have to be sort of open to what happened and where, whatever you did, where did it lead you? And sometimes we get stuck at just on the thing that went wrong and we don't see where it led us. Like, how did it open you up? How did it um, help you to change? How did some of this help you to move more, move on your purpose or to seek out a goal or cause you to seek for answers that are calling or summoning new forms of change to you? Some things cause you to, if it was health related, they're writing to really pay more attention to your body. And it might be very painful um, and scary um, as you think about your body in, you know, hindsight of whatever medical situations that occurred for you. But they really would prefer that you not spend um, your energy getting stuck on fear around your body. But what is the kind, what is the message that your body is encouraging you? The shift of the change. Um, because the thing about it is <clears throat> the limitations that we experience is this acute sign from the universe to highlight how much you deserve, not how much you, how, not by, so they don't want you to live by how much you are limited, but they want you to live by how much you deserve. And so if you feel like you are just stuck and limited, this is to bring out, provoke in you to turn it around to seeing things from a place of deserving and worth. That if you really want to break that cycle with limitation, focus on your worth, focus on what you deserve. And that is the only way to break the cycle. You're not gonna find it digging deeper into why those limitations are there. You just have to start shifting gears, shifting your attention to what you're, and what all the ways that you're worthy. And that's where the courage, you know, we, we, we think it's courage to go and to, to figure out how bad we are. There's no courage in that. That's the easiest thing that we can do. We all find it very easy. And you might say, well, yeah, but there's some people who don't want to see those things. Yeah, because if they if they see it, um, they're going to feel really bad. Who wants to see something that's just going to make them feel worse? But it really is hard, harder, let's put it that way, 
for people to really see their value, to see their strengths. I mean, how difficult is it for some of us to look in the mutable, in the mutable, <laughs> in the mirror, and you know, say you're beautiful, or I'm proud of you, or you're strong, or you're wise, you're capable. So these are the things they want you to investigate um, more in your life. Investigate, you know, discover the real you. And you can discover the real you through, they write, what gives you joy or the times that you've already experienced great joy. What was it? Because you know what you fear, but you in all that knowing about how much you fear and what you fear, you forget just how much joy you have along the way. The fear eclipses the joy. And in the same way that the fear, by continuously focusing on it in all the myriad of ways that we do it, if we shift, then eventually your joy will eclipse your fears, will eclipse your, your pain and your suffering. It doesn't mean that neither, um, that one goes away and the other one is just there. They're both always there because choice it's a part of our free will. And so choice will always be there. We just, by, by the, the way we focus, we choose to see one over the other by the way that we predominantly sort of tune ourselves in to a very neutral reality. So be kind, be compassionate, and be loving in your seeking. Now, they're showing me sort of a tree, a very wide tree, very ancient looking tree. And I can't see all of it, but if there's a sense of there were some tools on that tree. And the tree sort of opens up and it's like a passage or, or a um, gateway that allows you to walk through. And it just keeps appearing one ancient tree after the next, just continuing to walk through. So this gives me a sense of, I'm seeing an ankh sort of, um, in this passageway as we're walking underneath the tree. And it's, it's a sense of feeling of renewal, uh, rebirth in some way. And um, I'm sort of seeing some sort of almost Renaissance-like um, figures. And then there's a waterfall. And it almost feels as though too, that you are reaching back or your or or all of your um experiences and resources and gifts and talents um that you're reconnecting with all of this information now the the, the trees um get always represented for me a sense of <clears throat> connecting with your um your source or your I am presence and that channel. So this really flowing. And it just seems as though as you um, reconnect with your soul and with your spirit in this way, that this exercise, this journal exercise might be very uh, healing and allow a lot of your um, inner strength and wisdom to sort of just from deep within your soul, these seeds just come spring up within you and just revitalize your energy and your life and really connect you in with new resources of opportunities and rewards. So I'm seeing that angel number 253. And the message says, 
Your heartfelt prayers are the reason for the changes that you're making. Okay. Let's see if we can... Uh, reason... Okay, your heartfelt prayers are the reason for the changes that you're making or considering. These changes are truly answers to your prayers, so welcome them. Okay, so pay attention to your heartfelt prayers. And you might want to make a note of what they really truly are as a way of acknowledging that you believe in them and that you are uh, aware of what your these heartfelt prayers are. And then be open to the answers that come to you. Don't dismiss them. And then what truly welcome them in the sense believe accept embrace them and trust trust that you deserve them and this can be easier than you think when you feel that you slightly do have some ambivalence about whether you're worthy of what you want, or if it's really what you want, it's all the same talk. When you feel, I think it's the word segregation, like when you feel like separate from something that you want, you feel like you're, you're drifting away rather than floating towards it. And that feeling comes up in your chest or your heart chakra. Really invite the energy by extending, opening up your heart and send out a stream of light towards, of love, a stream of light that's full of love and engage your heart as if it was a string and attaching it to those prayers and to those answers, the things that you want to invite. It's almost like uh, the tractor beam on Star Trek. You know, you just send out that ray of light from your heart and just attach that to you and just draw it towards you. And then notice what it feels like as it slowly, you're drawing it towards you in this incredible love. Maybe what experiences are you feeling in your heart? How does the condition in your heart chakra shift when you engage this with love? It might be um, a soulmate or the healing of a friendship. It might be that your prayer is to see the world through a new lens, to see the world through a new lens of joy, to see the universe as whole and yourself an integral part of it, that wholeness. So invite good into your life by opening up your heart, relaxing it, taking some deep breaths, or you can rub your heart chakra. And just see your heart chakra, the 33 petals, just open up and surround you and hug you or the prayers that you want to receive. And do this every day or as often as you need in order to feel the welcoming really shift and become truly a part of you. You can feel the joy and the pleasure and the hope is bright and clear. So let's take a look at the Archangel. Okay, so it's Archangel Jophiel. And it, 
the message I feel coming from Archangel Jophio is to call upon him to help you to be think wisely about the choices that you're making for yourself and to transcend the world um, and the paradigm of fear through a higher wisdom. So he's writing something about supplies that a lot of people are really focused on things that they need. So right then and there, the usually we connect with what we need through fear or lack, same thing, right? In your silence, he says, deep, deep in your silence, beyond the costume that you put on the most, the one that makes you worry, the one that makes that you, you it's like he's saying, we put on this costume that we don't really believe in and that doesn't believe in us. And if you were to reach deeper every day before you just get out of bed and put on that costume, the same old costume with the same mindset and thoughts and ideas, he's asking you to reach deeper into the silence, take a deeper breath. And then he's asking you to send out a connection to the planet Jupiter from your heart. And it's ascended aspect, John Bay. And then with the love in your heart, unlock it. The codes and seeds of abundance, consciousness. And vision and balance and restoration. And then look for that costume that's radiant with joy and gratitude and deep beauty. Just allow yourself to really connect in and feel this. Feel it shimmering, this emeralds and gold and silver. And just breathe it deeply into your heart, into your cells, into your emotional body, your mental and spiritual body. And just allow yourself to be filled up completely. Very, very soothing. And just like give yourself some time to just be in that silence. And when you feel totally at peace and a shift within yourself, Ask the angels to release from you the fears that are holding you back from truly seeing your amazing, incredible, powerful, and beautiful self. And to continue to radiate you 
regenerate this energy, this new vitality within you until you are strong. To hold this frequency of abundance and joy for yourself. And so the Archangel Raphael and the angels of abundance and healing to remain with you continuously. And the angels of the ascended planet, Jumbe, until you're fully strong in your faith in this new emerald body consciousness. And you can call upon Archangel Jophiel to help you to see yourself with wisdom and to really help you to make wiser decisions. So we have the card balance, and it's the Archangel Zacchaeus. And this is typically the card um, temperance. And so it, it gives you a sense of first sort of taking it step by step. Mm, sorry about that. A neighbor unexpectedly had someone who wanted to, to get keys to get into the apartment and did not tell me. <laughs> Um, so, all right. Hmm. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so the card for temperance. And so the, the, the energy here is a feeling of like taking it easy. Okay. Don't push yourself too much and just, um, allow things, take time to take things in. You know, we're still in Mercury retrograde, which will um, end on the 1st of January. So as you're, you know, sort of processing and integrating and, you know, allowing yourself to really sort of um, grow into this new awareness of yourself, this new ver version of yourself, or it might connect with you through ideas and thoughts that start to just shift away from limitation and start to invite almost open a window you don't have to feel as though you have to rush into anything or do anything drastic i think is really the key here do everything my grandmother used to say whatever you do do it in moderation and I get a sense here is think about what's, um, as you work with energy, that is everything that you think about is energy. Everything that you interact with really has an energy signature, right? So be aware of the process that it sometimes takes for energy between you and whatever it is that you desire to come into balance. And so make space base for that. Make that something very sacred and that you honor that. Um, when you, in, in terms of allowing things to, to, to kind of integrate or to marinate with you, you know, an idea may, might seem like a really great idea, but it might feel not just quite right or you're not quite right with it yet. And so allow for that time they write of equity. To, to occur. Okay, so we have the Four of Air, which is another card of just, you know, resting, right? You know, really allowing yourself to give yourself a break, give yourself some time to let things process for yourself, your thoughts. Um, really, whatever prayer you put out there, or if you really have to clearly see that you, you know, that you need 
um, something to shift, allow those thoughts and ideas to shift within you or allow that template or that foundation within yourself to shift. And that takes time. You know, we're kind of like, this is a number four, and it's sort of like the, a solid foundation or a firm foundation. So uh, even our thoughts can sometimes be, you know, relatively fixed and we need time. That's why certain things come in and provoked, provoke certain drama provokes us out of it um, to, to, to get us to be open to other things. But right now, they just want you to take some time to relax and balance. Now, this card is followed by the five of air. So, you know, the thing is, there is a tendency to want to struggle with, resist. And usually, um, if we are not good with ourselves, we don't take the time that we need, then what we end up doing is running right into another sort of mental collage. Um, it might be that you might prov uh, feel provoked by others or you provoke other people in some way where they, you know, it's a card that can tend to um, sort of indicate um, sort of disagreements or, um, you know, sort of foul play in some way where, or this is this dynamic of um, energy <clears throat> sort of stealing, so to speak. So like, you know, somebody does something um, to someone else. And so one person is bested and the other one is sort of, um, is taken advantage of. So you might want to pay attention to a cycle whether do you feel like you're the one that's always taken advantage of because that can plummet you back into feeling worthless, powerless, hopeless, right? So be aware of, you know, really being balanced with yourself at this time. I Meaning make sure that energy, give it time to come into balance. Take the time you need. You don't need to rush into anything so that you don't put yourself in a situation where you feel inadequate or at a disadvantage and that, you know, somebody else is, has this advantage over you or the world seems unfair. Because all of that is about those basic fears of limitation and lack. So making wise decisions and using the information for the highest good. Remember that if something's happening that's out of balance, it has nothing to do with you until you get involved. So by taking your time, waiting for the energy to become more um, sort of equitable, um, then you can sort of step in at the right moment when the when the frequency is higher, when everything is right for you, and you won't feel that. So maybe sometimes it's about jumping in too fast, and then we spend our ego spins off this whole thing about you know nothing works out for you, everybody's always taking advantage of you, etc. That kind of thing. All right. So the card I already pulled from the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Earth, and so the Ace, the Aces highlight you know, an opportunity of the sort of this elemental uh, representation that there's an opportunity for abundance, um, for you to to sort of launch in some way that you can make a, a new direction, you can create a new shift in some way. So this is the opportunities for you to create um, something that you would like are possible for you at this time. That's the foundation. And that's why by making sure that you're in balance with the energies or whatever it is you're trying to do and not pushing yourself and giving yourself the chance to really get there, okay? So you don't have to worry about like, oh, I'm gonna miss out on something. Give yourself a chance to get there. 
just know that you're working towards this possibility of being ready to invite this new opportunity in your life. If you're going to create something um, starting after the first, then, you know, this could be getting the plans ready. And so this retrograde might help you to really slow down and really be uh, mindful and thoughtful of the energies, the, the seeds of abundance that are planted deep within you at this time. And that's something to really look at. The seed of abundance is really deeply planted within you. It's within this, the silence of your soul. It's, it's within that true version of who you truly are, or who you really are. And it's about accessing that. Instead of putting on that, that fake costume, the illusion, the ego one. So take your time and really pay attention to the wisdom in all energetic experiences that are flowing in and out of your life. Remember, they're going to be negative streams and positive streams. They're always there. But by you getting um, sort of operating from a more balanced place, you instead of saying, oh, you know, I got to engage the negative all the time because it's drama and it's upsetting me. You can say, this is not about me. Let's let it float by and wisely choose what you want to connect in with. And this is the process that allow you to really get reach deeper and access that seed of opportunity within you that the universe is set up for you just as clearly as all those other things. Okay. So I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful week and the rest of the year. And I will connect with you at the beginning of the new year. God bless.